Ta-da! Welcome back, everybody. Appreciate having you here. Thank you so much for joining me. This box is quite heavy. It is from Wichmann. And boy, do we have work to do. There is a lot going on. It's the time of year to be changing things, freshening things up. I've had a lot of things going on in my head. So I got myself supplies. Without supplies, many times I can't do what needs to be done. Thanks to the generous shipment from the orchid room, I don't have any more ceramics. So let's see if what is in here still qualifies as good quality as it was three years ago. And I have a plus one. Yeah, I was tempted to buy more, but I didn't actually see what I liked in the shop. I'm wondering if the nurseries are running a bit low now on stock based on the global circumstances. They haven't been refreshing or I don't think they've been able to refresh their stock for like, you know, the three months. So there wasn't much in way of choice that I thought, oh yes, yes, oh my goodness, I've been waiting for this. But I did find one, it's a small one, it's a baby. I'm ready if I need to put it in a bowl. And it's very breezy. And look at this shredded paper in here. <laughs> oh well, this could be interesting. This could be interesting. We'll have to work slowly. I've been waiting all day to unwrap this because the noise pollution is astounding. I kept getting interrupted. Oh, okay, yes. And Wichmann also carries um, orchid tops. So I took advantage and stocked up on those because I do have plans to do a little bit of um, road to Jerusalem with my orchids. I want to have some pots freed up for the possible arrival of more rapiculous lalias from an order I have been waiting for since February of 2020. And we are now almost at the end of July. So there shall be some work to be done prior to any possible arrivals. And then I can be all set and ready for when they arrive, if they ever arrive. So here are my orchid tops. Love these guys. I got myself a large. And I will have to check my list as to what did I allocate the large for. Definitely something bandacious and gracoids, something like that. And I wish they wouldn't stuff them together so radically because these prongs are not resistant to breakage. If you force it like this, look, they're so jammed together like this. Oh, I'll figure it out afterwards. So that's two mediums. I think I'm gonna put my Renanthera monachita into one of the mediums, if I remember correctly, according to my list. I gotta be very careful, it's been extremely windy. Ceramis. One euro 90. It's the cheapest I can find on the market and the quality looks great. Very little dust. Yeah, the quality. Look at the size of the kernels. Oh yes, nothing's changed. Thank you, Wichmann. There's five bags. Oh, look at the size. Ah yeah, more dust. Okay, here we have a dusty one. Ah, you can see here we have kind of a more of a dusty one. Um, smaller chunks in the back. 
big, big, big chunks in the front. In the past, I have actually um, sifted my ceramics to separate the large from the little because the little is great for the seedlings and the large is great for the other things. But I'm glad that they haven't reduced their quality. That is so good to see. My first batch of ceramics that I bought lasted three years, including recycling it and everything like that. And I would still have some left, but thanks to the orchid room. And then I also got myself some Kolomi. I still don't know what I'm going to do with this, but it's white. And now I want to think about what I'm going to do. It says that it's fertilized. I'm going to have to test that. It says that it stops any kind of fungus. And it says that it doesn't permit any kind of pests in the pot. It doesn't clog up. It provides a lot of light with a lot of air for the roots and it is clean in handling it. It is over five to eight years active and it is a complete plant media. I really am intrigued. I have to do some tests now though. I love my white to go with my orchids. I have two bags. Here's numero two. All right. And the piece de résistance is my little orchid here. My little claim to fame. Let's see about the quality. It's a vandacious orchid and it starts with a P. <laughs> and the flowers look like it would be a Cygnodes or something like that. It hasn't got the typical Vanda blooms. Oh, it's tiny. Okay, well, they told me it's a Jungpflanze, as in seedling. And I've seen them on other websites and everybody's using the same pictures. If you want to Google it, then please feel free to do so. I won't be putting up pictures. I'm always a bit wary about the rules. And it's the Vanda Pumilla. Look at this little baby. So I hope you can see that. I can't see anything. I'll put up a pop-up, but it's a Vanda Pumilla. And she is definitely Jungpflanze. Seedling. Let's have a look. And I've got my welcome cocktail ready to go. Here we go. Oh, we have a little branching root there going on. Oh, that looks promising. There's not much to show for here for the time being. Calcium, magnesium, seaweed. 300 ppm. It's a seedling, but it's a vanda and it's been through some stress and that is my reasoning why 300 ppm. Okie dokie. Here are my spoils. This was the most expensive of the lot. Look at how they're sweating up already. Hmm. So I have a small one, a medium, two mediums. One is under the shelf and a large. And now I can check my list and see who I've actually allocated these orchid tops for because there was a reason for these buys. Maybe I just bought the big one because I thought, mm, you never know when one grows, you want one spare, but we shall see. So welcome little Pumila. I'm going to end this video here right now and resume when I take care of Pumila. A couple of days later. But I just thought I would add that to my video of the previous unboxing. I'd had a couple of days to suss out Van der Pumilla. I'm just going to add on how I'm going to take her in to her new setup and take you along to complete the video. 
I have someone in the background watching nosily there. Newcomer, he has to be right in the mix. Hello! Yes, it's it's fine. Don't worry about it. All good. Pomilla, cousin it. Cousin it, Pomilla. Happy? Good. So we've got quite a good little root system. I'm not going to be chopping anything off, even though these are not viable. It doesn't bother me. The root tip here has died back. There's a little growing nubbin over there. We'll see what it does. My plan is to just put her in a self-watering setup, the majority of which will be ceramics. But I don't want to waste all the ceramics and fill up the entire pot with it, so I'm going to bulk bottom up with some lecker. This is a tiny little pot. It's not one of my usual setup pots. These were the emergency ones that I bought, luckily, in the thought of, well, you never know. And guess what? The lockdown happened. And my other pots come all from Portugal. So the border has only just opened on the 1st of July. I do not know how their stocks and supplies are, but look, these two little random finders, they fit perfectly. And I'm only using one loop. It is a vandacious orchid. It is a seedling. I'm only doing one because the ceramus is extremely water retentive. And for that reason, I'm not gonna slip two microfibers in here. I'm going to bulk it up with lecker on the bottom. There we go. With the loop up to increase my wicking potential. This ceramis is a total of three bags. Now washed really well to get as much of the initial dust out. Ceramus will always be dusty, no matter what you do. But it's been rinsed, boiled in RO water, and rinsed again. For the time being, that's as good as it's going to get. I'm going to put you in. And I hope that these roots will adapt nicely to this environment. It is always touch and go when you change something. I would really like this root from the top again just to be nudged further into the media and stay. When all else fails, lava rock. Now, because of this is something I don't want to keep totally wet, but I do a lot, a lot of flushing. I'm gonna add some seashells on the top that have been boiled as well a long time ago, and they still have the odor of the ocean. But I'm going to put these on top because when I flush the pot, I'm hoping to get some of the benefits of the calcium from the shells into the pot and into the ceramics. So the roots already have something to munch on when it comes time to get some sustenance into them. That is the plan. So I hope that works. It looks a little bit odd, but you know what? I hope it works. Alrighty. The label, I am, I have not made my personal labels yet. That is all to come. I'm making a list in order to make it worthwhile to get the label maker out. I'm going to fill my little reservoir. 
and I'm going to flush through one time. The ceramic is very wet because it's still not dried out from processing it. No harm, just to give it a little bit more of a humidity boost so that there are no dry nooks and crannies anywhere. And we shall see what she does. I hope that you enjoyed watching me unbox my supplies and then seeing Van der Pomilla put into her new home and set up where I hope she will do very, very well and we can see her cute little blooms one day. Thank you so very much for watching. He's okay. <laughs> Curious, curious, curious. I really appreciate having had your company and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.